This is the second video in the coronavirus information campaign. In this video, we will discuss how the virus spreads, how to tell if you may have been infected, and how to prevent the spread of COVID-19. COVID-19 became a global pandemic in March of 2020, with more than half a million confirmed cases and over 25,000 deaths across 100 and 98 countries. COVID-19 spreads via small droplets of water that are invisible to the naked eye. They come from an infected person when they cough or sneeze and launch these droplets into the air, or when they touch their mouth and touch another surface. The virus in these droplets can remain alive in the air or on surfaces for many hours. Breathing air contaminated with the virus, or touching a contaminated surface and then touching your face, can cause a viral infection. It can enter the body through live cells or holes in the body, such as the eyes, mouth, nose, or any wound that cuts through the skin. COVID-19 is a respiratory virus which affects the lungs. The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. While the majority of cases are not severe, people can have more extreme symptoms, such as pneumonia and acute respiratory syndrome. These cases usually require hospitalization. Certain people are also more at risk, including people over 70 years of age, those with compromised immune systems, and those suffering from chronic illnesses such as cardiovascular or respiratory disease, diabetes, hypertension, or cancer. If you have been exposed to someone with laboratory-confirmed COVID-19, that is, someone who has been uh, tested positive, and you are experiencing fever with either cough or shortness of breath, you might have COVID-19. You might also have COVID-19 if you have these same symptoms, fever with either cough or shortness of breath, um, even if you didn't know you've been in contact with someone infected. In both cases, you should contact your doctor to see if you should be tested. This is especially true if you have difficulty breathing or in one of the at-risk categories. It's important to remember that before you go to your doctor, to call them first and find out what specific precautions you should take to prevent accidentally infecting others. However, do not go and override your doctor's advice and head to the hospital if not needed, as it may take up hospital resources. Even if you have mild symptoms or suspect that you have been exposed to someone with COVID-19, you should still practice isolation and restrict activities outside except for getting medical care. Do not go to work, school, or public areas and avoid using public transportation, ride sharing, or taxis until you have been tested and you get the go-ahead from your doctor to stop isolation. People who contract the virus can be contagious and infect others even days or weeks after the symptoms disappear. Because of how long COVID-19 can remain active in the air and on surfaces, it's important to take steps to reduce the likelihood of catching the virus. Without proper protection, it isn't possible to prevent droplets in the air from coming into contact with your body. However, you can reduce the likelihood of it happening by practicing social distancing. To put it simply, if you can reduce how often you come into close contact with someone who may be infected, you can significantly reduce the chances of contracting the virus. It's difficult to know who is carrying the virus because an infected person can be contagious for a week before they start displaying symptoms. Health experts recommend that if you have to share a space with people that you don't live with, such as in a grocery store or in a park, that you maintain a distance of six feet from each other, when possible. Preventing transmission of the virus from surfaces to hands and then to live cells, such as the mouth, is simple and easy. The virus doesn't survive when in contact with soap. Its outer layer dissolves completely and the virus deactivates. So, we need to make sure that we don't touch our faces with unwashed hands and to wash our hands with soap. The Center for Disease Control recommends that people should wash their hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water. Singing the happy birthday song to yourself twice in a row 
while you wash your hands is an easy way to know if you have washed your hands for long enough. If you are out and about and can't wash your hands, then an alcohol-based hand sanitizer is good substitute that will significantly reduce the chance of catching the virus. There is a lot of confusion around the use of masks, so it may be important to clear some of it up. Let's start with surgical masks. You've probably seen these around and have been advised to even make your own due to a lack of supply. Notice that when you wear these masks, they do not form an airtight seal around your face. Additionally, the material in these masks is not as protective as that in N95 or P100 masks. Surgical masks are the most useful for containing the viral droplets that sick people emit. However, because COVID-19 can be transmitted by asymptomatic people, wearing the mask in public can still help protect others from harm. The next up up are N95 and similar masks. When worn with an airtight seal, these masks filter out 95% or more of any viral particulates you encounter. They can be worn to protect yourself and others. The next step up is the half-face respirator. With N95 or similar filters, when fastened tightly, these masks guarantee an airtight seal and last significantly longer than standard N95 masks. Additionally, the inclusion of a dedicated exhale valve means that the mask does not break the airtight seal upon exhalation. The most protection you can reasonably get comes from the full-face respirators, or gas masks. These masks are usually overkill against COVID-19, but can still work to protect you when used with a modern filter. These masks offer all the benefits of the half-face respirator, in addition to giving you eye protection and a longer-lasting filter, which can protect you against much more than viruses. This video series was made in April of 2020, and information about COVID-19 is updated regularly. Make sure to make a habit of staying up to date on the latest guidance from health experts. For more information, please visit the website for the Centers of Disease Control or the World Health Organization. Links in the description below.